Mr. Kuokun, PDP Southern Koshiva Senatorial Aspirant, has denied allegations that he masterminded an attack on his opponent, Senator Geshem Basi. Speaking to Koshiva Watch TV over the weekend, Mr. Ko described the accusation by his opponent as baseless, maintaining that Geshem Basi is only trying to get public sympathy. We were supposed to have the primaries for the senatorial ticket on Wednesday, the 3rd of uh, October. It was found out that the committee arrived and started distributing moving materials and uh, the party in the state was asking, you arrive, you wouldn't even want to have a meeting with us and have even a meeting with the aspirants who are the stakeholders in this. Okay, fine. At some point it was discovered that the material for the Southern Senatorial District had been taken out and the chairman of the committee said that a member of the committee was handed the materials that's the result sheet and the ballot papers um, and the name was given as a zubike Mwoke. and um, we started asking questions where is okay he didn't go to the stadium which is the venue of the primaries nobody could <coughs> locate him even the chairman himself couldn't explain where he had gone to people became a bit agitated that's how delegates and party members started moving to Transcorp. Because that's where the chairman of the committee was. That's where materials were being distributed from. Now, who, nobody could locate uh, Azubike. And we kept asking the chairman that because the chairman of the party too was like, how would you do it without even informing us? Because we're even supposed to the party in the state were supposed to provide some ad hoc staff to work with them and nobody was engaged okay we insisted that he needed to call azubike and we must we must locate him finally he called azubike and uh, asked azubike to come back to the hotel by the time he arrived he came in a black camry vehicle belonging to senator geshem basse an aspirant he came out he had one envelope in it and naturally once he was identified as a person and the, the party members moved towards him and were like where, where did you go to where the, where are the materials that's how the the in fact actually at that time some rushed at him we pray the security i mean uh, we were around helped him and of course i personally helped him because but they snatched that the, the the envelope from him i managed and we took him in i went after the envelope and we collected the envelope and took it to that room 811 but what did we find scanned copies of the result sheets the original wasn't there Azubike, why did he need to scan the result sheets where are the originals nobody could find it no Azubike wouldn't talk on where those items were. Of course, temper started flaring. Finally, when he saw that the people were gathering more, and we showed them, I said, from the way, he said, look, the way these people are going, things will, will get a bit rough. Better let us see how we can solve this problem. The security men, they were, I think there were two security men who were attached to the chairman who came, I think, because the chairman is a retired colonel. So that's how those people pre started prevailing on him. He finally said that the items, that the items in that vehicle. So when he mentioned, he was familiar with them to the extent that he knew the name of the driver. He said, Sonny, they should ask Sonny. So that's how they came out. There was one other young man there who knew the Sonny. He said, yeah, that vehicle that the driver is called Sonny. And that is uh, Gershom's vehicle. At that point, this is me to save the situation i suggested that we don't go and search because the security people were supposed to go and search the vehicle and bring out the items i said you don't search in the midst of that crowd because he, they can react i quickly asked that i will go with them let's drive the vehicle let's ask the driver to take the vehicle and drive him to a police station and that's how we went there the driver himself resisted even when that man introduced himself as a military officer, I showed his, uh, I think his name is 
I later knew him as Captain Sadik. He presented his ID card and I told him that it was in his own interest that we're asking that we should move from this place. And that's how we finally, after a while, he accepted to drive with us and we drove to the state housing police uh, station. At the state housing police station, he now asked him to show that they want to search the vehicle. He initially resisted, but finally agreed, open. But you know, he knowing where these things were, did not assist us in any way. We opened the boat, we didn't see. We opened the pigeon hole, we didn't see. We just checked around, we didn't see. So since it was Azubike himself who said it's, those items were there, I now had to take a phone and call another person who was in the room there and ask that they should take the phone to Azubike to mention where exactly the items were because the driver was pretending that he doesn't know. It was then at that point that Azubike said they were under the, the, the seats. That they were under the seats. So the four bundles of the ballot papers were pulled out from the, uh, from under the seat of the, of the vehicle. Now, that crew represents the total number of ballot papers because in the, uh, at that primary, the total number of expected delegates are 783. And each bundle has a hundred uh, leaflets. So that's, that represents only 400. So expectedly, about 800 leaflets should have been, that's eight booklets should have been sent for that purpose. Where are they remaining for? Where is the original copy of the resource sheet? Well, it was quite natural that they were with Senator Gershon Basse. At least Senator Gershon Basse knew where they were. From that point back here, they kept putting pressure on Senator. At, at that point, anyway, the first thing is we now asked the police decided that they were going to impound the vehicle because we took those items and handed over to the police. They became exhibits. Now, the police said they were impounding the vehicle, but at, before this time, while we were doing this, he had already placed a call to Senator Gershon Basis and his aides. So, two of his aides drove down to the uh, scene of the event and in the course of argument when they said he locked the vehicle one did not even take note of that because uh, the police asked him to stay at a point and hand that is the driver and handed over the key to one of the aides who drove away so at some point the dpo of state housing uh, station said he didn't want the vehicle there he would prefer that this matter be transferred to the state command, said CID. So we asked him to come and drive the vehicle to state command. He said the key wasn't with him. So we are forced to hire a towing van to tow the vehicle to the state uh, CID. Okay. At this point, we went back. Where do we go from here? Let's... As we care, you need to provide... The, ma the remaining material so that we can go ahead and walk. As if we care was not still forthcoming. So, at this point, some police officers and other security agencies who were, who were around, I, at least I could remember that the area commander was there, the head of operation, uh, SAS was there, uh, the DPO state housing was there. We now said, okay, is there any way, because some of the persons came in and then said, why wouldn't we invite Gershom to come? And so that's how Gershom came. All along he didn't come there. He was comfortable wherever he was preparing the results that he would present. Gershom came in. And when he came in, the first thing he did was to attack me physically. There were witnesses. He attacked me physically. But of course I looked at him and I know he's a sick man as far as I'm concerned. I told him I won't. Uh, if I if I if I take on you, I don't want to be involved in some incident that uh, maybe at the end of the day people will ask me why did you do it. He abused me. Told me how I am an ingrate, and of course I will always ask the question: Where on earth has Gershon been my benefactor? 
what did Gesham ask? He said they should go and conduct primaries, a election. With what materials? I asked. With 400 uh, voters, uh, I mean ballot papers, for an estimated 783 delegates. How would you conduct? With what result sheet? When specifically he knows, and he think, uh, we, what do you think I, do, I wouldn't know, that it's in the PDP uh, electoral guideline that only results that are entered into or original result sheet are, are valid. So how would I go and accept to participate in a, an, an election in which result will be entered into some other sheet, whereas he has the original? So I insisted we cannot hold. We cannot hold, and I insisted. He, at this time, it was already getting to 6 o'clock, or I think it was beyond 6 o'clock in the evening. Now, that's how I was still in the room there when he, he left. He was let out. I heard when he came up. At this point, the, naturally, the stadium is not far from Transcom. All the delegates who ought to have been inside there had now virtually moved into uh, Transcom. So, I, because at least I could hear from him, it was booed outside there. I don't know. The, I was never there. I was still inside the room because we were still talking with the chairman of the committee. The story of whether he was attacked or not attacked, first of all, I don't carry talks. If he is jealous that I find support and people show support to me publicly, then he should start doing something better for, his, for himself. He should relate with people in a better way. He will enjoy that. He cannot be a good politician when he's so sneaky. He doesn't. He wouldn't want to spend kobo on people. So how would he enjoy their support? So when he went down, and I heard people booing him. Yes, it's true. I heard from the window. I could hear that people were booing him. I'm not aware of any attack on him with the volume of security men that brought him into the room and were, took him out. As far as I'm concerned, Gershom is staging, feigning that attack, all to seek public sympathy. He concluded by asking his supporters to remain calm. Margaret John, for Koshiva Watch TV.